Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Sim Airports. I hope you're having a good one because I'm excited to be back. I know it's been a minute since the last episode, but I got so invested in Jurassic World Evolution that I just had to share. I, I, I just, I recorded a lot of it. I recorded a lot of it and I just wanted to get some videos out there because I've been really enjoying that game and I do recommend checking out the series at the very least, if not the game itself, since it's it's dinosaurs, man. I've, it's dinosaurs. Need I say anything else? It's it's dinosaurs. That's like it's like airplanes, but with teeth and without engines, and basically not at all like airplanes. Well, they have wings, some of them, and tails. So you know, it, there's there's similarities, probably. Anyway, we're back at it. We're back with some sim airports. And today, I want to get some refueling services going for the airport because that's something that's going to make the airlines a little bit happier. I've actually gone ahead and done the tutorial for refueling, so we're going to sort of build something relatively basic. But I do want to walk you through a couple of things that are going on with the airport at the moment. So, garbage is an issue. Or rather, garbage was an issue. I mean, it still is an issue, but it's it's being resolved because I've hired another eight janitors. We only had two for this entire airport, and I've recently moved garbage up to the top end of the map, which we'll look at in a second, and it just, it was too much. It was too much for two janitors to clean all of this, so there's now ten janitors that are looking after this entire airport. So, in doing that, you know, I moved garbage sort of up here, and I've given it its own little space, which is full, by the way. It's absolutely full, which is just a testament to how good the janitors are. And I've put the whole thing on its own little section of road so the garbage trucks can come in, they can park up, and essentially uh, they don't block all of the traffic that's trying to get in here. And I did similar with drop-offs. I decided drop-offs would be off of the main road as well. So you get dropped off, you kind of walk down towards the entrance, which I feel like... That's that's relatively realistic for an airport. Most airports I've been to are very much like you kind of get dropped off across the road or, you know, a little bit a ways away from the main entrance and you kind of walk down to it. So this just means that drop offs are similar in the sense that the vehicles don't block the main road and then pickups. I've just decided to sort of expand across here and uh, a lot of people use the trains. A lot of people get buses. It's it's whatever. It works fine. Everybody kind of comes and goes at a reasonable rate. There's not really too much going on, so not really too much uh, reason to complain as it currently stands. We're also sitting on $1.7 million because I've let the game run for just a couple of days because, you know, fuel is actually kind of expensive and there's sort of an economy for fuel in this game. That's what this little thing up here is. You can turn on this overlay, which is the fuel exchange, and essentially it is the fuel market prices at a glance you can optionally disable this from the hud panel of the fuel thing uh our current reserves are zero liters our current capacity is zero we have none pending delivery we have no fees per day and we have no estimated demand for tomorrow so essentially we need to create a fuel system and something we can do is actually click on an aircraft stand we can upgrade it and on some of these, we can add fuel ports, which is an output port that can be placed on gates and connected to underground pipelines to enable faster refueling services. Without uh, researching that, we would need to essentially go in here. We never got the extra baggage cars for this hangar. Interesting. We should probably do that. Uh, without doing uh, that, we would need to buy some fuel trucks, which I think we might need to do anyway and they will pick up fuel from a fuel depot and take it to a plane so i guess what we'll do is we'll go into research and i don't for the life of me remember what it was we were uh, we were looking for there i'm gonna be completely honest uh fuel ports which requires operations too so let's start researching operations too and i guess we'll just get more baggage cars and i'll build another hangar for the fuel trucks just to make sure the baggage is being handled really really quickly so we got all that going. It is a little bit busy, but I'm not too worried about it. And essentially, all we need to do is go in here, search up fuel, and a fuel depot is going to receive jet fuel deliveries and distribute it to uh, pipeline-connected 
reservoirs, which is essentially going to be a fuel tank like this or a large half a million dollar fuel tank, which has a capacity of 1.6 million liters. So it's it's pretty good. It is pretty expensive. And that's why I'm not too worried about having 1.7 million dollars. We have an underground option, which is 1.1 million dollars and uh, has 1.6 million liters capacity. So uh, the same as the large one. And honestly, we'll probably build this. We'll we'll, we'll probably build this. It's going to occupy floors minus one and minus two, which is actually kind of impressive. So that's that's something I'm thinking we're going to do. And you might notice that uh, this, you know, obviously being underground, it does occupy space. So that's something we have to be aware of. Same with the pipes. They occupy space as well. So we have to make sure that the fuel system isn't interfering with the baggage system. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at roads because actually, can I click on a road and edit it? No. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look at roads and my thinking is that given the nature of this, not having any, dis you know, distinct direction that the traffic travels, you know, is it the right side or the left side that they drive on in this game? I have no idea. I'm going to make the executive decision that they will be driving on the left. So here's here's my thinking. I'm thinking we're going to we can build right down at the edge here. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and that's going to mess with the storage zone. But that's that's fine for now. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing back here to about, let's say, uh, this spot. I'm going to go up a little bit. We're going to go across like this. We're going to come back down. We're going to go like this. And that's essentially where I want to do a bunch of my fuel stuff. So the fuel depot is essentially going to go there. Uh, and I think that'll be fine. I could put it on this side, but I think this side will be okay. So, you know, fuel depot, depot, whatever you want to call it, right about there. And in terms of fences, I mean, we can go in here. We can say, I mean, these gates can be put on roads. So I think, I think the easiest thing to do is going to be two gates right there, a bit of fence right there, and we'll take out this bit and move storage back this way. So we'll get that all built. We'll go into construction. We'll go to dismantle. And we'll dismantle all of this. We'll go to zones. We'll go none. And we will remove storage. We'll go ahead and grab a new storage zone and put it just back here, which should be fine. And if we go back into roads, we can say, give me a bit of road there and there. And that'll give us uh, two roads right next to each other with some fence gates on them, which I think is great. So we have this fuel depot. All right, so we've got that going. If we go back into fuel, we're going to want this thing, which can fortunately fit right next to this guy. So we're going to plop it right about there for $1.1 million, which is a lot of money. But we can easily connect these guys together. So there's sort of an output here. Uh, there's probably an input somewhere, but that thing's going to take ages to build. Either way, it's it's good to have, right? It's a massive, massive fuel tank. It's not taking up any space above ground, so that's totally fine by me. Let's also expand deliveries into uh, this space just so we have a bit more room for it. And I might even go ahead and just expand the sidewalk uh, down to, I guess, about there is is probably okay i guess we should maybe enclose deliveries i wonder if that would be an idea so you know bring a fence why can't i do this can't create more than that wait what is it in two it is is it in two zones hold on a minute have i have i done something a bit weird here let me let me clear this clear this uh fence like this and this i suppose uh we can get a gate which is going to go right here and then deliveries will be just inside that fence. So a bit of a weird space, but that's that's honestly okay. And uh, I think we'll go ahead and just dismantle that bit of sidewalk or demolish that bit of sidewalk right there. And that should be all right. So is this thing built? It is absolutely not. It's, it's still going to take a minute, but that's fine. I'm not really too worried about it. We are still secure, right? Yep. My, wait, my garbage zone's full again. Is the airport clean? It's It's nearly clean. Which is great. The passengers weren't thrilled at how filthy the airport was for a bit there, but uh, it's it's getting somewhere, so I'm not really too worried about it. This thing's getting somewhere as well. 
I think this might actually be the longest construction we've had in for like a single thing in the uh, in the entire game now, which is certainly something. Now, what is what is this complaint here? So not connected to underground fuel pipeline network. Okay. So if I go to fuel and I grab this, I I think we just connect it right there. So all I'd need to do is this, right? I, actually, I don't know if that is the case. Hold on. Do I have to bring the pipes around this thing? I think I do. Okay, that's interesting. Let's cancel that one. We'll get those pipes done. And then I think that connects the depot to the tank, which is one thing. That's That's one stage of what we're doing here. These guys are, there we go. They're building the pipes. Not connected to fuel pipeline network. Oh boy. Is there an, is there like an output over there? I can't, I can't tell if there's like an output here, which is a, a bit of an issue. Can I like, if I, if I do this, does that maybe connect it? I mean, it's not connected to, uh, to anything else. It's not connected to like a, I guess a fuel depot or whatever it is, uh, the fuel refuel station. It's not connected to one of those, but it's, it's apparently connected to something now. So sure, that'll be fine. Uh, these refuel stations, by the way, they just sort of get dumped right next to the taxiway, similar to the, uh, the baggage stuff. So what I think I'll do is I will just go, I kind of just want to go up there and do three of them. And I think I can do, I can do five of them. Why not? We have the money. We'll do five refuel stations up there. This thing is fine. And now what we're going to need to do is run this pipe the entire way up to the, uh, the refuel stations. So to about there and straight across. And then we can get some fuel. That's when we start bringing in some fuel. Uh, we're going to need another hangar as well, which I think can be medium. I don't think it needs to be larger than that. And where do I want to put this? I guess here is, is probably fine. So we'll keep a medium hanger right there. We'll get these guys going. They'll be connected once the pipes are in. We get ourselves some refueling trucks. We stay on top of research as well so we can get uh, fuel ports. What's a bag hub booster? Allows construction of baggage hub boosters for increased sorting throughputs. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I, I don't I don't mind the sound of that. That sounds kind of exciting. Might be something worth looking into. Uh, but these guys will all be connected, like I said, as soon as this piping's done. And I guess what we do is we go into operations, we go to fuel services. We're not currently active, which is fine. I think the reason for that is we don't have a hangar with a fuel truck. So we need to get uh, get that going as well. Let's actually make that uh, a bit of an urgent thing. Since the hangar is relatively quick to, uh, to make as well. And we can also go ahead and upgrade these guys with fuel ports must be placed on gate a1 can i place it anywhere Ooh. oh i like that i like that i can place it anywhere that's that's kind of neat that's that's actually pretty cool i don't know if it should be there but i do like that and then i would guess it has to be connected to the fuel system right it absolutely does oh and putting them right here is such an easy connection straight over that's perfect so these trucks here, these these refuel stations, I guess, are largely going to be used for, I guess, the smaller stands. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's let's get these fuel trucks. I'm excited. So we've got three fuel trucks. We go into operations. Our pricing model, we could track the market. So fuel will be sold to airlines at a rate proportional to the fluctuating market price. Demand for refueling services will remain relatively stable but your profits will fluctuate. And then if I have a fixed price, I would be selling at $1.43 right now, which is above the current price in the market. So let's do a, let's track the market and say that we're going to be plus 10%. Or what can we go up to? Plus 50? Oh, good Lord. Let's do plus 20. We'll do, we'll do plus 20%. So if prices stay the same, about 11.59 of 57 flights will want fuel. If we go down to 15, it'll be 12.74. Okay, so that's not that many. This will require approximately 140 to 270, uh, 294,000 liters of fuel, which is fair enough. 
So we're going to need a recurring order, I guess. Oh, boy. Refill at market. Wait. Refill daily at market. No, 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 no. We are not refilling anything because that is terrifying. 1.6 million liters per day. Well, I guess it would be 1.6 million liters of fuel once and then up to 300,000 liters per day. But I think what we'll do is we'll look at, you know, what exactly is, let's say half a million. So that's 5,000, that's 50, that's half a million. So half a million right now is 700 and it's getting cheaper. I have no idea. Uh, the point being half a million is, is a lot. That's 31% capacity. So... Yeah, let's 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 go for that. Let's let's buy the fuel. It's it's very expensive, but we now have fuel. This guy is now filling up as well, which is great. So we should end up with refueling services kind of doing their thing. The trucks are filling up. The trucks are coming down to the planes. And is it being refueled? I've actually got no idea. Refuel chance 13.0. Oh my god. So there's a it's a very low chance for airlines to want to refuel. Yeesh. That's kind of rough. Maybe we don't want to maybe we don't want to go 15. Maybe we want to go like 5%. So 14 flights will want to refuel. I don't know how I feel about that either. I I don't wait, this guy's refueled though. Okay, so that one actually did refuel. I think that just gave me twenty thousand dollars for refueling as well. I don't think I can I can I see a history of oh, I've got no idea. You know, I think I think we just got twenty thousand dollars for that uh, that plane refueling. And I don't think it was a big plane either. What about you? So this one is twenty percent of refueling. This guy is is refueling. I think. Right? Refueling set you know, tens of thousands of liters. And up at the top, refueling plus sixty seven thousand dollars. Oh my god. Okay, so refueling is a really good way to make money, it turns out. What about you? You're refueling... Okay, yeah, so... So refueling the air... The, the, the planes is a great way to make money. That's... That's kind of great. That's... Oh, my God. Okay. I'm excited about this. I'm really excited about this because... As I've said a couple of times, this airport's not going to be a permanent one. We're eventually going to sell this... But if we're able to, you know, buy a $1.1 million tank for 1.6 million liters of fuel, if we're able to make $60,000 per plane on refueling at 5% markup, I mean, that's not bad. That is not bad. We could sell the airport right now for $4.8 million as well. So... I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sell the airport right now for $4.8 million because there's still things I want to learn. Uh, I still want to look into, for example, remote stands. But I actually kind of wonder, if I looked at remote right now, so if we said, you know, la oh my god, we could do large remote stands up here. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, we could make the airport so much busier. Um, remote bus pickup. So how does this work? So it needs to be adjacent to the taxiway. So we would need to bring, I guess, some taxiway kind of down here, which we can't. So we'd have to buy this chunk of land. It's half a million to do it. But if we bought that chunk of land, we could bring some taxiways down. We could put some stands on the bottom end of the airport. And then have the buses head out to the remote stands up here. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. We could... <laughs> we could really push this airport to the limit if we wanted to. We could really, really do that. And I kind of want to. I'm not going to lie. Because I think security is doing okay right now. I don't know. I don't know that I want to do large remote stands. I don't I don't think I do. I think that might be too much. But at the same time, it's very tempting. I also love the idea of the extra large ones, but 
I I feel like I mean let's let's look at the airlines, right? The airlines don't necessarily love me at the minute, which is fair enough. In terms of large flights, we would only have two in the morning, which is fair enough. We only generally do two in the morning. Oh, you know what? Let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's just, we're going to have some fun. We're just going to do it. Um, and I'm going to put them sort of this way. So they kind of use this upper taxiway to, uh, to get in and out. So they're not kind of interfering with the planes down here. We'll do one large remote stand. Because we only have that many large planes available. And if we look at small, we have kind of enough to fill one, two, three, four, seven, eight. So what is that? That's like two small stands in the morning. One, two, three, seven, eight. That's fine. And five. So we have enough to almost fit completely fill two small stands. So we'll do uh, two remote small stands there. And we'll get all that built and see what exactly we can do. Um, half a million for this chunk of land. I'm going to do it because I need to bring the taxiways. Oh my God. It's, it's loading. That's fair enough. I guess it has to be like, kind of. oh, there we go. Good Lord. Yeah. This, this pops up every time I load, by the way, this is all the custom airlines, which are installed, but it says they're not. So that's, that's news to me. Oh, it also gives me a little fence automatically. Wait, did I build that fence? No, I think it gave me that fence. I'm not actually sure if it gave me that fence itself or not, but we'll go ahead and uh, we'll dismantle the uh, the fence just there because we don't really need it. And then basically what we do, we're going to bring some taxiway out. We're going to bring it down here and we're going to see how that works. So remote bus pickup. Allow for buses to transfer passengers to and from a remote gate. I don't exactly know how this works. I think it... Oh, I know what I... Oh, hold on a minute. Do I need this? Do I Do I need to... I don't know if I needed that chunk of land. Because I've realized, I think what I can do is just put a bunch of these with, like, some sidewalk leading out to it. So if we look at taxiway, I mean, I can do it down here. I could probably do it at the bottom, but I think I'll probably kind of put it along here, which is fair enough. And then it just needs to come down like this. So little bit expensive to do this do i want to put it at the bottom i think i think here's fine we'll bring it to there oh my god this is i'm actually kind of excited about this i'm i am actually kind of excited about this because i think this is going to be really cool um i do think it would be an idea to get some foundation as well so what size is this this is nine okay so oh it's wait I, oh oh that's a point hold on can i cancel you and we'll bring the taxiway to the bottom instead. So we'll bring it right across. We'll go back in. We'll get that foundation. We'll kind of come down like this. And I guess we'll just expand the uh, this end of the terminal with more gates, I suppose. I mean, three more. We probably don't need it to be this size, but that's fine. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I'm actually so excited about this. I think it's going to be terrible for security. I think security is going to hate it. I mean, the airport, I, I think we're pretty much at the limit with what the airport can handle, but I'm actually really enjoying just kind of learning how this all works. It's it's kind of cool. Uh, so what do you need assigned to? You need a, a door to the terminal on the ground floor. Must be assigned to either one bus pickup in both modes or several bus pickups with at least one set to pick up only and one set. Oh, we can do drop off only. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. So if I brought the taxiway over, I could create like a little drop. Oh. Oh, I want to do that. Because here's my thinking. We bring this corridor down here. We kind of connect it so that this is like a drop-off area. They come through and that way. If I got, if I turn this into like a public space, we could let them go through there as well. Let's just do the one mode for now, just to get an idea of how this works. But I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, must be assigned to a remote bus pickup. Requires at least one functional hangar with an apron bus, which we don't have. So let's go to medium hangar just back there. And I guess we assign you to those stands as well, which is totally fine. We'll close that. This is all built. This is mostly built. So let's see what we're looking at. Let's, let's, uh, let's see what we're seeing here. So remote bus pickup, we can do 
We can do a few of these. We really can do a few of these. I think... Hmm. Let's go here. Let's go here. And in terms of spacing, uh, we can't necessarily get them even. So let's actually cancel this one. And we'll just move this along a little bit so it's kind of evenly spaced out. I don't think we need to do that, but I think that's probably fair enough. And in terms of getting people there, I think we can just use sidewalks. I think we can kind of just let them walk out to the plane. I, I think that's that's kind of a thing. So if I do this, right, I, I don't... I don't know if this will exactly work, but I, I think we can just do this. So I'll just bring a sidewalk over here. And maybe we do some fences. Maybe we do something to kind of box those in a bit. But I think that's about it. So then in terms of, of doors, we want to go for a sliding door there, there, and here. We're going to want a gate agent desk, I suppose. Um, I don't know, here here and here and i guess that'll be fine and then in terms of queues and stuff like that i mean let's just do something relatively simple so if that's the head of the queue we'll kind of bring it back i guess a bit like like this so it's slightly off it's 18 in total but that should be fine that's not quite right there that's not right either it's queue tool that's going to be the death of me uh, let's bring you back and make sure I'm doing this properly. So that's 18 there. And this guy is going to be exactly the same. So we'll do that. That'll all be assigned. We can go to construction and dismantle this wall. And then we can just do, do like benches and stuff in here as well. So if I go to bench, we can grab this guy. We can say one, uh, two. We can do here and here. And uh, we'll just sort of... You know, line them all up real nice like. Which I think uh I think that's I think that's I think that's pretty solid. I think that's a pretty good looking little area. I don't know if it's gonna be super busy, but I like it. And then we can go for info displays as well. We'll just make it nice. We're just gonna make it nice down here. That's that's my priority at this point, is just making this place nice looking. So in terms of info displays, let's do I guess I'm just going to do a bunch of them. I'm just going to do a whole bunch of them right there. That should be a pretty good display across the board. In terms of decor, we can get some nice plants in there as well. So we'll go for, let's see. I guess this next to the displays would be totally fine. So something like that. And that's good. I think that's good. Now, how, do, how the hell does this work? Must be assigned to a gate remote. Requires an adjacent... Oh, God. Adjacent road. Wait. Wait, this doesn't need taxiway. I didn't need to buy that entire chunk of land. It looks like it would need taxiway. Oh, no. No. Oh. <laughs> I spent half a million dollars on something I didn't need. Okay. All right. I probably... Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Did I get carried away and not read this? Requires a road and the apron site. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I got carried away and didn't read it. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so this is all set up properly down here now. We've got the desks. We've got the queues. We've got the benches, the TVs. All of the roads down here are working and they're connected to the taxiways. So that's fantastic. These guys are all working as well. We've got the buses, which are currently parked. So now what we got to do is just schedule some flights so let's go ahead and see what exactly we can do here so my thinking is we'll go to atlantic international we're going to be bringing in a 767 which is fantastic we've spark jet with a 767 as well which was an evening flight which i didn't quite realize so we might only have one in the morning uh which is fair enough we have a afternoon 707 right there and i guess we can grab another 707. Do we have a 767 for the evening? We absolutely do. So let me grab that. So that's not necessarily as many flights as I would have liked for this particular setup, but I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, I think this is roughly where we want it to be, and it can kind of just run into uh into the rest of the, the night. Uh, so 
Is there some overlap there? What's what's going on there? What is where is this supposed to go? So this is just a what is what is that? What is what is that overlap right there? So there was a there was a large flight overlap. That's that might have been me actually. Uh, so we'll do this. We'll just extend this flight, you know, right to the end of the afternoon. Uh, we'll put this guy, I guess, technically, right about there is is where it would be. And then this guy is in line with that one, I think. Yeah, he's, he's in line with something. He's in line with that one. So that can go about there. We'll kind of extend you. That might not be enough time. So actually, I think what I'll do is move this guy to about there which is going to extend it you know through the night but that should be fine that should be enough time for both of them and then we have this morning flight which i guess is going to go about there and it's just going to extend you know through the morning so that's fine that's that's a remote large stand in terms of small flights let's go ahead and grab a morning 737 Let's go ahead and grab a morning E195. And let's grab a 737 right there. So we'll just sort of plop you there. We'll plop this one down here. We'll kind of do the same just the whole way along. So that's going to need another three morning flights. So we'll grab you as well and drop you down about here. We need another two, which I guess is going to be Lernyville. So we'll throw that one right about here and this one right about here. We're sort of getting to the limit on what we can do with morning scheduling, which is which is interesting, but fair enough. We'll grab these two as well. We'll grab uh, you. We'll grab you. And we'll start, you know, blocking these in a little bit as well. So something like this should be fine. Uh, do we have some afternoon ones here? We have two of them. So let me just... Uh, I think I just grabbed an evening one, which is a bit weird. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we did grab a morning one. I'm going to have to cancel that flight, I think, because that's that's going to be a problem. So confirm uh, flight cancellation, uh, move you to here, move you to here. And I guess we don't have any. Well, I guess we can get more evening ones. So we'll grab two more. We'll move those into kind of this space, which is going to have a little bit of runway overlap, I think. But I think that's OK. I think I think this will kind of do the job. I'm not really too worried about completely filling the remote stands. I just kind of want to see them working. And I think I think I might have got some of those flights scheduled before midnight, so we might actually have some remote stand usage today, which would be lovely. Uh, do these guys get assigned to anything? No. So these guys should just generally work, which I guess is great. So let's see what happens, I guess. The first remote flight is due in just after just about 7 a.m., so... Hopefully, hopefully this works. Hopefully the airport doesn't implode. Okay, people have started coming through. We've got people going through security. The queues are not too bad. People are moving nice and quickly. We've got plenty of them sort of filtering through this way. And hopefully, we're going to see a couple of people get down towards the remote stands. I really hope this works. I, I realize that throwing another large stand into the airport might be a bit tricky, but... I hope it works. I'm also wondering, do we have any upgrades needed for this? I mean, fuel ports are one thing, stairways or whatever. I don't, I don't really know. I'm not, I'm not really sure how this is going to work. Uh, security's doing whatever. We get you coming in. We get you coming in. We should have that large remote flight. So, right. There's, there's one. There's the remote. So what is this? This is the this is the apron bus coming out. That's picking everybody up. The stairs are there already. That's fine. Uh, this bus here is circling down this way as well. That's that's pretty cool. I actually really like that. <laughs> that's that's really cool. I do like that I can change the mode on this thing as well. That might be something to look into. Um, but looking at it, I mean, we've got the buses waiting. We got the passengers coming along. I think security is just not fast enough now. I think really that is 100% where we're at. Security is is not uh, fast enough to get these people through. The walk is quite considerable, but that's cool. I I like this. I really I really like this. And the flights have a bit of time. At least the large one has a bit of time. So you're bringing passengers out to gate I one. 
you are only 93% boarded. This one has 118 people due to get on board. This one is... What are you going to be? You've got 41 people due to get on board. Where's the bus for this one? Might be there. Uh, this guy's still sitting, waiting on 118 people. There's 116 of them uh, on the way. Okay, well, I hope they got through. What about you? What's going on? 100% boarded? That's fine. What about you? What are we going to be looking at? 100% boarded? And you are 100% boarded. Look at that. Okay. So if all goes to plan, we're getting over half a million dollars per day now. That's, that's kind of cool considering that this whole area up here is still makeshift and not at all, you know, fit for purpose. Uh, the... <laughs> The escalators, it turns out, are a bit slow, which we might want to do something about. I feel like I could get rid of this conference room and just, you know, get more escalators here. I feel like I should do that. I'm going to do that. I feel like that's that's not a bad idea. Let's, let's just clear this out of there. Let's just go to construction and dismantle everything in the room. Dismantle the door. We can put a wall right here. We can dismantle... I mean, it's going to make this office a little bit bigger, I guess. But that's that's probably fine. Uh, we can essentially build that wall. Dismantle that wall. We'll build a new wall. Or rather, build a new wall right here. Uh, dismantle the old one. And extend the, uh, the office a little bit. So, congratulations. You now have a larger, larger office. And it's a bit weird, maybe. It's it's maybe a bit weird, but there you go. You've now got a larger office. I don't know what the floor is in there. I think it's the dark wood. So this one. Yep. And uh, now all I need to do is go to floors and grab the green carpet. And then go upstairs. We need to sort of expand this a little bit. But I think this will be good. I think this is a good, a good bit of work to be doing. So we're going to need that space if we wanted to do two more that space if we wanted to, uh, that space right there if we wanted two more so that's that's probably enough i mean it, it definitely looks like everyone's backing up a little bit which is which is not ideal so let's try and get this done as quick as we can it's it's not a major issue admittedly it's it's not the end of the world because you know they get downstairs eventually but it'd be nice not to have the tail back it's a bit of a fire hazard so We'll see if we can't do something about it. Uh, so that can go. This can all go as well. We'll put the info display down at the bottom now, right about there. So right there. And uh, in terms of flooring, it's going to be as simple as grabbing ourselves that nice wood floor. And then it's going to be as simple as getting some escalators down. So we kind of need to wait for the floor to be. Oh, wait. No, we don't. We can do that. And I guess I could do stairs too. I guess I guess technically if the escalators break down, you would want stairs because they're safer, right? And then we can go vending machine and put like, I don't know, electronics vending machine back there. We can do a food vending machine, a drinks vending machine. That seems, that seems like a good addition. This, this, this seems like a good thing. So we'll see if it is. We're not going to know until tomorrow, but... I feel like we just made really good money today. Oh, and this thing's still here. Well, fair enough. The bus, I imagine, is, yep, on its way. Is it going to fully board? 109. It did. That makes me really happy. That makes me so happy that the airport's kind of working. It really makes me so happy that the airport is, is actually kind of working. That's so cool. I'm also thinking that we should probably move the security... Well, we can't really move the security exit, but I'm slightly worried that some people might come around here to use the stairs to get up into this space. But we'll find out. We'll find out. It's it's not the end of the world. I just... I'm happy about this. We got some fuel. We got remote stands to see how they work. I don't think there's much else left that I need to figure out, right? I think we've about done everything. So at this point, I mean... What's the airport worth at this point if we have a little look? 6.1 million. And we're making about half a million, over half a million every day, assuming no delays. So 
I think it's pretty, it's, I think it's a safe bet that if I let the game run for a little bit, we could probably start a new airport with a comfortable 10, maybe 15, maybe 20 million dollars. And I think that would be kind of cool. I, I think that would be kind of cool. But I want to know what you think. How much do we want to start a new airport with? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know, you know, do you want me to kind of just wing it? Should we? I'm not saying the next episode is going to be the new airport, by the way. But, you know, do we wing it? No pun intended. Or I've, I've been considering looking at actual airport layouts and maybe trying to recreate something there. Because every time I've played airport CEO, uh, I always... I always put the airport in Northern Ireland and I always, you know, name it something like Belfast City or Belfast International Airport, which is Belfast being the capital of, of Northern Ireland and those being the airports that I frequent. Uh, so I could maybe look at trying to recreate sort of a Belfast City Airport. It would be better to do city, I think, than international because international is quite small. Um, it'd be kind of interesting. I We could try and... <laughs> We could try and recreate Heathrow, but it's got five terminals and it's bloody huge. So, you know, do we want to take inspiration? Do we want to try and recreate? Just, you know, feedback in the comments below is always appreciated. Uh, every single time there's been some fantastic feedback on the series thus far. But that's going to do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. I'm so happy with how this airport's going uh, and with how this series has been going it's it's really great just seeing the uh the support for it and it's it's weird that we've fallen into a bit of a niche surrounding uh building airports consider considering what city skylines dlc is due out i think in like a week from now so we'll probably continue this game while we're playing city skylines airports but uh yeah, City Skylines Airports is going to be a thing as well. Really fitting, considering we've been on the uh, the airport CEO and our Sim Airport binge. Anyway, I'm waffling. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I will see you next time. Bye bye